Hey guys, today's video is going to be a follow up of my last video which was talking about replacing these two sequencers in this furnace. Now this one is going to be checking how to check your three heating elements in this one. Of course, this one has three, a lot of them will have either less than that or more than that, but uh, this is getting into checking the, the heating elements and your three uh, thermostats here, which is, uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. And I'm going to show you the online and offline methods I call them. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check it with the furnace running. So uh, let me uh, go ahead and get it started here. Okay, I just heard that last sequencer kick in. Okay, so obviously there's power on everything right now, but so I gotta be careful here because it's easy to get into the power, and I don't recommend messing with anything when the power is on, unless you're a licensed electrician and feel comfortable doing this. But uh, basically, one of your most important tools in working on furnaces and stuff is a amp clamp meter, and there's a simple reason for that. And if you look, this is your first, your bottom element, your middle element, and your top element. There's two wires hooked in each, and there's 220 across it. But what this does, this checks for two things. If you put your amp meter across here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but we're drawing 23.2 amps on this wire, 20.4, 19.8. So now you got current flowing through all three of your heating elements. If you did this, and you found one of them that got zero on it, no amperage at all, and either that element's burnt out, or you got a bad sequencer, or your thermostat's open. So there's three possible reasons. But if you think your furnace ain't putting out enough heat, check your three, check your heating elements, make sure there's current flowing through them. If there is, then you might have a, some other type of problem. Now, if you check that and you get one that don't, show a reading on it, then the first thing you want to do is come over here and like I said again you got to be careful because the power is on obviously and if you got power here see there's 231 volts right there which is 220 and uh, so if you got this on and your heating element ain't on because you ain't getting no current through it then the element is more than likely burn out Follow the offline testing I will show next to test resistance on the element. If you get zero volt across the element, then check across the thermostat. If you get 240, then the thermostat is open, either kicked off due to high temperature or it's bad. If it's zero volts and zero across the element, then it's either a fuse or a sequencer. But you can check the fuses the same way. Just uh, ground one out. You get 110 here. 110 here, 110 here, 110 here. So you're getting a reading off all of them. If you want to check them like this, you can too. You're getting your 220 here, and your 220 across these. Okay, now we're going to do the offline testing. But that's basically all, you check all three of your heating elements the same way as I showed the first one. I'll give it a few minutes here to cut off. You'll hear one sequencer shut off, and that shuts one element off. And the other one shuts the other two elements and your boiler off. So right now, I'm drawing 62 amps across it right now. One element shuts off, it'll go back down to uh, about 40. And if your thermostat right there is one, and now it's down to 42, so you got two elements on in the boiler running right now. Now, if you ever, if your furnace ever runs like this for a real long time and still putting out heat, but uh, it's not shutting off like that. Now we're drawing zero, and then your problem is probably your sequencers, because if they start acting up, sometimes they won't shut off like that. That's what the other furnace was doing. It kept running forever. Finally had to shut the breaker off to turn it off. And that's the only way I could get it to shut off. But, uh, but yeah, the two most important tools, besides the screwdriver, 
for working on furnaces is a voltmeter and an amp clamp. And you want one that probably goes up to 200 amps. This is a, this is about the cheapest one you can get right here, and it's about all you need for working on this. And voltmeter's handy too. But now I'm going to talk about the offline. So power's off now. I just pulled the main disconnect out. You put your voltmeter on ohms or continuity. That's zero ohms right here. So now you can check your fuses. That fuse is good. That fuse is good. That fuse is good. And that fuse is good. Okay. So now the next thing you want to do. And this I'm just going to show one element, but you do the same thing on all of them. And hook one side up and read across it. You're getting eight ohms. And that's about right. And if you didn't get a reading here, if this was just open, say an overload like this, then the element has burned in two, which can be fixed if you need to do a temporary fix just to get it going again. I have a video showing how to do that. Or you can just replace the bad element. So you can check this one the same way. And see there's power going through this. So everything's good on this. If you don't get a reading across the thermostat, which will show infinite or overload on the voltmeter, then the thermostat is either open from being too hot or it's bad. If you do get a reading, then either the sequencer is bad or a fuse is bad. Do the online test to determine this. Now I got another video that talks about fixing this type of heating element. It's the heating element I used in the video came out of a dryer, but it's basically the same. All heating elements are very similar. And it's a few tips to save you a ton of money and uh, get a lot more life out of it before you have to replace it. You may never have to replace it. That's a few tips on the diagnosing the problems with the electric furnace. And like I said, there's really not a whole lot to these. Now, if your heating elements kick, if your sequencers kick on, your heating elements come on and they start clicking, that means you got something wrong with your blower. Sometimes they might have a separate fuse just for the blower, and it could be your blower motor bad or a bad capacitor or something like that. Now, I will talk about one more thing while we're here. This is your uh, 24 volt transformer right here. I'm going to put the uh, block back in here. We should be able to diagnose it and see if the, it's getting power and putting power out. you got to be careful if you put one of these in without the sheet metal. It's so easy to get into the fuse there. But uh, we're going to put it back on the voltage here. Check here. And you can follow the orange wire here. This is where it's getting its hot. So if you touch this to the frame, there should be 120 volts on this. And there is. And this black here should be the ground for the secondary, but uh, you should be getting 24 volts across one of these. It's right there's 30 volts. So that's your uh, 24 volt circuit that runs your thermostat and your sequencers. If you don't get 24 volts here, then either a fuse is blown or the transformer is burned up. And it's never exactly 24 volts. As you see, we're reading 30 volts off of it. The first thing to check if you're... Uh, all your fuses check good and your sequencers ain't clicking in the thermostats aren't clicking is to make sure you got power going to your thermostat because you could just be as simple as your bad thermostat so you can check your red and white wire that's usually what the colors are all you gotta do is put the meter across that and if you can see it see we're getting the 30 volts off of it so we know we're transformers good if you do that and there still ain't no power there then uh, it could be a the coil will burn out in one of the sequencers or your transformers will burn out. If you got power here and the furnace ain't doing nothing at all, uh, you can put these two wires together and make sure that uh, it's, it is your thermostat before you buy a thermostat because as long as you got power here, it should be doing something. I mean, the sequencer should be at least kicking in. But, uh, but yeah, it's just a few tips and tricks. And I am a licensed electrician, a journeyman. And, uh, but I'm not an expert on furnaces. I just know the basics on troubleshooting here. And I'm just using a few basic uh, procedures I use on any type of electrical appliances to diagnose possible problems with. And like I said, it's really simple here what's going on. And it's usually easy to find what the problem is. But, well, guys, if you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching.